What is up guys, I'm Ryan and in this video we're going to go over max and min points and also points of inflection, okay? So let's start with max and min points, okay? So to explain, I'll use an example. Let's just say I have y is equals to fx is equals to x squared, okay? This is a very simple example. So if we were to graph this, we're going to have a curve, a quadratic line like this, yes? If we wanted to find the minimum point, how do we do it? Very easy. We learned from previous years, we can do it by axis of symmetry, axis of symmetry okay or we can do it by uh, vertex form right we can convert our x squared here into vertex form and then we can find vertex form and then we can find the minimum point okay now I'm gonna teach you a third method the third method is by calculus okay how do we use calculus whether use derivatives okay calculus derivatives okay now how can we use derivatives to find okay now let's think if we're gonna have a minimum point here we know that the slope must be zero, right? Because if I were to draw one tangent line, one straight line that touches this point once, this line will have zero slope, right? So because, why? Because if we do this, if we just draw a line, this has to be zero slope, right? Obviously, if we were to draw a line here, this is negative slope. If we draw a line here, this is a positive slope, right? So if we take the first derivative, okay? First derivative. So first derivative. So we d dx x squared, right? We want this. So this we know is equal to zero, right? So we know that f prime x, okay, is equal to 2x. But we want to figure out at what x coordinate, okay, at what x coordinate is my slope 0. Because if, if we can find where slope is 0, we know that x coordinate gives me the vertex point, okay? So that gives me the minimum. So how do we do it? We set this to be 0, okay? We set this to be 0. Because when, when slope is equal to 0, okay, it means vertex. Okay, so so far you just know this. So, so far you know this is a vertex when slope is zero. Okay, um, there's something called also an inflection point, but we're going to talk about that later on. Okay, so for now you just know that when slope is zero, we know it's a vertex. Okay, so we know that when, so if we were to sub in zero there, we will have zero is equal to 2x, so x is equal to zero, right? So we know when x is equal to zero, we're going to have a minimum point. We're going to have a vertex. Okay, but now let me give you another example. What if I had y is equal to fx, but this time it's equal to negative x squared? Okay, what if a equals a negative x squared? If I were to graph this out, it would become like this, right? Then we can see that there's also a max a vertex here, but this one is a maximum point. It's different, right? It's a maximum point. And at the same time, what's the same is that we're going to have here a slope is also equal to zero, right? When we at when we're at the maximum point here, slope is also zero, right, for the tangent. Because if you think about it, here is positive slope, here is negative slope, and then here we want to draw a straight line. There's a zero slope, right? So with this, with just this information, we really can't tell a difference. If slope is zero, do we have a maximum point or do we have a minimum point? So let's assume we do not see our original function. Do not see the original function. Uh, we just know that when we have the slope is equal to zero, when we have slope is equal to zero, is it actually the maximum? or the minimum, right? We don't really know. We don't really know. Okay, now how do we figure out whether is it going to be a maximum point or is it going to be a minimum point, okay? How do we know when slope is zero, are we having a maximum or a minimum point, okay? That's actually very simple. We just have to look at the previous slopes, okay? Previous slopes. What does that mean, okay? So if we were to look at here, when we have a negative slope, then zero slope, then positive slope. That means we're going from negative changing to positive slope. So obviously we have a minimum point. Okay. If we have a positive slope changing to zero slope and then changing to negative slope, then we obviously have a maximum point. Okay. If you still don't understand, uh, let me in more, uh, explain it more in depth. So if we have f prime x equals to two x, we're going to have a straight line like this, right? If you think about it, this is going to be, this is x and slope, right? So if you look at where the slope is zero, it's at this point, obviously. But on the left hand side of it, we have negative slope values, right? And then on the right hand side of our zero slope, we have positive slope values, right? So it's telling us the slope is changing from negative to positive. If we have a negative change, a negative slope to a positive slope, then that must tell us that we have a, neg uh, a minimum point, right? And then if we were to look at the second example here, we will have a negative 2x, right? When we it once we have y equals negative 2x right so if you look at here 
we have a positive slope first, positive slope, positive slope, positive slope, zero slope, and then negative slope, negative slope, negative slope, negative slope. So as you can see, we have a positive slope first and then a negative slope. If we have a positive slope first, then a negative, then it must tell me that it means it's a maximum point. Okay. So to summarize, it's to see whether it's maximum or minimum, it's max if slope goes from goes from negative to positive okay and then we're going to have a min if slope <coughs> goes from positive to negative okay next um let me use a more complicated example okay so let's just assume we have a curve like this right Let's just assume we have a curve like this. As you can see here, there's going to be two turning points. We call these turning points, okay? So our, verti our vertices, we call it a turning point, okay? So let me just draw it in. Oh, oh I don't know what the actual curve is, this is, what the actual equation of this curve is, but we're just going to leave it. I'm just going to demonstrate to you the idea um, graphically, okay? So, in my, so we have two turning points here. For both of these turning points, the slope will be zero, okay? Slope will be zero. Slope is zero. And the slope is zero here. Well, how do I know slope is zero? Because if I draw a tangent line, this tangent line is flat, right? This tangent line is flat. So it tells us that at this specific point, the slope is zero. So if I just look at the slope here, I just know slope is zero, slope is zero. How do I know this is maximum? How do I know this is minimum? Well, very simple. We look at the slope before the point and slope after the point, right? For this point right here, it is going from a positive slope to changing to a negative slope. So positive slope, zero slope, negative slope, right? So therefore, I know this is a maximum. OK, now if I have here is a negative slope changing to zero slope and then changing to positive slope. So I know this must be a minimum. OK, so that's the idea of finding max and min points. OK, now next on to points of inflections. OK, what are points of inflections? It's a point of inflection when we're changing concavity. OK, what does changing concavity mean? OK, so let's use this. An so let's assume we have a curve like this. OK, so if you were to look, can you see that this section it's kind of like an N shape, right? It's bending inwards, okay? And then this section here, whoops, uh, let me just highlight it. So in this section here, the green section, it's kind of like bending inwards, right? And then if we, and then afterwards, it's changing, changing, bending upwards, okay? So if you think of it as pink, is kind of like a U shape. So pink, pink is like U shape, U shape, right? And 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 the green is like green is like an N shape. OK, so the, we call this U and N shape. We call this concavity. OK, so if it's U shape, we say concave up. If it's N shape, it's concave down. Does that does that make sense? OK, so how do you check for it? So this is how what it means graphically. But how do we check for it uh, in terms of mathematically with derivatives? OK, OK, when we have a U shape, the second derivative must equals to bigger than zero. OK, and then if we have a concave down, so N shape, the second derivative must be less than zero. OK, so what is the second derivative used for? It's used to find whether a curve is concaving upwards or concaving downwards. OK, and also now going on to point of inflection. OK, what is the point of inflection? A point of inflection, POI, point of inflection, I just short form, is when you have a change in concavity. OK, and how do you have to check for how do you check for a point of inflection? So if it's a point of inflection, your second derivative must be equal to zero. And OK, and there's two conditions. You must change in sign, change in concavity. OK, so there must be a change in concavity for something to be a point of inflection. All right. So I know right now you guys are probably pretty confused. So I'm going to use an example to uh, help you guys understand what's going on okay so let's just say we have a function f of x is equals to uh e to the power of negative x squared right okay so if we were to graph it out it's going to look something like this okay just trust me on this is something looking like this so just by observing we can tell that okay my graph is actually very ugly let me redraw it we can have something like this okay so just by using our eyes to observe it seems like seems like that we're going to have a point of inflection right here. OK, and a point of inflection, right? Sorry, we're going to have a point of inflection right here and a point of inflection right here. Why? Because at this chunk, this is going to be U shape and here is kind of like N shape. Right. And then here's going to change it back to U shape again. Right. So we should have 
I think two points of inflections. But right now we can't be sure because we're just using our eyes, right? So how can we be sure that we have a point of inflection here and point of inflection here? How can we be sure? We can use algebra and math, right? So as I said before, how do we find points of inflection? To find point of inflection, we need to use the second derivative. Second derivative, right? So how do you find second derivative? Well, f prime x, you should know already from uh, from the previous videos, right? Here we need to use chain rule, right? So we have e to the power of negative x squared times negative 2x, okay? So I won't explain how, how to do this derivative anymore, differentiation anymore, because we're past that point already. If you still don't know how to do this chain rule differentiation, you have to look back at the previous videos, okay? So now on the second derivative. So we know that the first derivative is e negative x squared times negative 2x, right? Oh, let me, let me write, rewrite this so it looks nicer. So it's going to be negative x squared times x like this, okay? So how do we d the second thing? The, do you see how we have a product rule here? We need to use product rule, right? So d the first thing, if we d the first thing, it's going to be negative 2 e negative x squared times negative 2x again, and then times do not d the second thing, right? And then plus do not d the first thing, d the second thing, so just times 1. Okay, so we simplify this, it's going to be 4 e to the power of negative x squared times x squared plus negative 2 e negative x squared, agree? Okay, what we can do here to make it look better, we can factor out the e to the power of x squared as well. So we're going to have 4x squared plus negative 2. Actually, not plus. Minus 2. Okay? Does this make sense? Okay? So now we know that f prime prime x is equals to this chunk here. Right? And how do you find a point of inflection? To find a point of inflection, we must have the f prime prime x to be 0 first. Okay? So let's just set that. So this is f prime prime x, right? This is f prime prime x. We must have our second derivative to be equal to 0 first. So 0 is equal to e negative x squared, 4x squared, minus 2, okay? So if this is the case, what is our x going to be? Okay, what is x going to be? So obviously we have two solutions, right? Either this is equal to 0, or we can have this equal to 0, right? And if this equals 0, this is not possible, right? This is not possible. No solution for this case, right? No, no solution. Because no matter what we put in for x, uh, we can never have 0, Right, because even if x is very big number, we can never zero. We can only get very close to zero, but we can never have zero. Now, how about the one on the right hand side here? Four x squared minus two. So obviously we have uh, four x squared is equal to two. So x squared is equal to one half. Right. So x is equal to square root plus or minus square root of one half. Okay. So first is from the first condition. Okay, from this condition right here, we know that x must be plus or minus one half. Okay. But does this mean when x is equal to plus or minus one half, that is our point of inflection? The answer is no, right? Because we also have to change whether it changes concavity or not, whether it changes concavity or not. So now here is when we have to create the sign diagram for this f prime prime x. So let's create a sign diagram for f prime prime x. So let me just label this f prime prime x, okay? This is a sign diagram for the f prime prime x. What does that mean? Okay, we know that f prime prime x will have zeros at, this is negative root one half, and this is positive root one half, right? So if, so we need to check changes in concavity. That means it changes in positive to negative or negative to positive, right? So let's check. Let's check a number here. Let's check a number here. So what's a number that's bigger than root one half? Let's say two, right? So if we put the number two into this value of x, put two, okay, put two in here, put two in here. What do we get? Do we get a positive or negative number? Well, if we put two here, this is obviously a positive number, right? Two here, positive number as well. Positive number times positive number is positive. So here we know it's positive. Okay, now let's try a number in between negative one half and positive one half, root one half, so number here. So let's try zero, right? If I have zero here and zero here, if I have zero here, this is just number one, right? Zero here will give me a negative number. So therefore, in the middle here must be negative sign. It must be a negative, okay? If I have any numbers in between these x values, so in between this x and this x, in between here, if I have any x values here, I sub it into here, sub it into here, I'll get a negative f prime prime value, right? So I have negative here. Now, let's say I substitute another, uh, sorry, not positive. I don't know if it's positive yet, right? So let's say I substitute another number here. What's another number that's here? Another number. So let's say I substitute negative 2. If I substitute negative 2 into here, what's going to happen? Negative 2 into this x. So this is going to be a positive number. How about this one? This is still going to be a positive number, right? So positive times positive is still a positive number, right? So I know this is going to be positive as well. So now let's observe. Do you see how we have a change in sign here and also a change in sign here? Okay. So if my f prime prime x, my second derivative, changes sign, it means there is a change in concavity, okay? That means there is a change in concavity. If this sign changes, that means there's a change in concavity. 
if there's a sign change here, that means there's a change in concavity. So not only is there a change in concavity, the f prime prime x is also equal to zero. Okay. So now, since these two have been checked already, therefore I know that these are the points of inflection. So we know that when x is equals to plus or minus one half square root one half, we know that it is a POI because we've done all the checks. Okay. So this is the final answer. All right. So if you have any questions, feel free to put it down in the comments below and, um, Good luck, and until my next video, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.